codominance, both alleles are visible in the phenotype. A great example of this is blood type. Type O blood has no protein markers on it called antigens, and it's essentially the recessive blood type. Type A has A antigens, type B has B antigens, and then there's a fourth type called AB, which has both the A and B antigens. This is codominance. The alleles are written as capital letters with sub or superscripts for the different alleles. This is how blood is written, assuming that everything is homozygous except for the AB blood type. Codominance can also happen in the fur of many animals. Two hair colors will show up, sometimes in patches. Let's try a case of animal fur. A homozygous red horse is mated with a roan horse, codominant red and white hairs. What is the possibility of producing another roan horse? I'll just choose the letter H to stand for hair, R for red, and W for white. Both the red allele and the white allele will get capital letters because one cannot truly dominate over the other. They both show up. So we cross our red horse and our roan horse, and we get 50-50 homozygous red and heterozygous roan. That's a 50% chance that the horse will be roan. Now let's try a blood type problem. What is the chance of a female with blood type A and a male with blood type B to have a child with blood type O? For this problem, we'll assume the people with type A and B blood are heterozygous. Otherwise, there would be no chance of having a child with blood type O. Blood type is commonly written with a capital I, and the letter is superscripted. Type A just needs one A allele, and the other one can be O. Similarly, type B needs just one B allele, and the other can be O. When these cross, we find that there's a 25% chance of type AB, 25% chance of type B, 25% chance of A, and 25% chance of type O. Another type of non-Mendelian inheritance is sex-linked or X-linked traits. These are genes that are located on the X chromosome in humans or other mammals. Because males have only one X, but females have two, sex-linked traits will affect males and females in different proportions. Let's look at a few sex-linked problems. A normal male and a female who is a carrier for hemophilia marry. What's the probability of a child produced by these two individuals being born with the disease? This Punnett square will show us the probability of having males and females and whether or not they'll have the trait. So set it up as you normally would. Remember, you put the trait as a superscript and the Y will not carry the trait because it only exists on the X chromosomes. Then fill out the Punnett square. Having at least one normal allele will make the person normal, so the females are all okay, but since males only get one X chromosome, there's a 50% chance among the males that they'll have hemophilia, and it's just a 25% chance overall. A man that is red-green colorblind has a child with a woman that does not carry the colorblind gene. What's the probability that a child born from this union is colorblind? Well, once we fill out the Punnett square, we can see that there's actually no chance of having any child that will be colorblind but any girl born would be a carrier. Let's try one more. Eye color is a sex-linked trait in Drosophila, a type of fly. Red eyes are dominant over white eyes. Use a Punnett square to determine the possible genotypes and phenotypes of a cross between a white-eyed female and a red-eyed male. The male has red eyes, so he has the dominant red-eyed gene. Since white eyes are recessive, the female must have two white eye alleles. You set up the cross and see that there are two possibilities. All of the females will be heterozygous with red eyes, and all of the males will be white-eyed. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet.